guys and welcome. We made it. Hi, Rebecca. Yay. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> Uh, so we're really glad to be here today, um, and we almost weren't because I'm having some internet connection issues, but there's always a solution to be found. So I'm really glad that we are here. Um, today we are going to be chatting about using kinesiology taping in neurological cases, um, and we're very happy to have Rebecca Haddock from Equitape with us. She has years of experience with, um, with this modality, using it specifically on neurological cases. So she's going to share some of those with us. Um, and Rebecca's prepared some slides and some videos and some case studies and everything to go through. So it's going to be really great. Um, we want to encourage you guys to talk with us, ask questions, engage with us, share any challenges, thoughts, cases, theories, whatever you want to share with us. Do that here and now. That's why we're live. That's why we're on Facebook. So you guys can engage with us and chat with us. Um, this time is for you, so welcome to those of you who are joining us live. If you're watching the recording, the replay, let us know, hashtag replay, and let us know, again, your thoughts, questions, comments, theories, cases, whatever you want to share with us, this is where, this is the platform, um, and we will carry on that conversation as well over the next few days. If you guys want to chat about something, we'll be around, um, so please do, please do. Um, with that, Rebecca, please introduce yourself. Let us know what your interest is in using kinesiology tape for neurological deficits, for neurological horses. Sure. Well, um, it's awesome to be here again with you, Anne. I do enjoy these conversations. And uh, definitely, if you're out there listening, jump in. Uh, the conversation is great. And you can bring up something that we can definitely chat about. I love to hear about things that are going on with other people, practitioners around the world, so that's great. Um, I am the owner of Equitape, and I, uh, you know, my whole goal here at Equitape, or a horse first company, is to find innovative and creative non-invasive ways to help horses through the use of equine elastic kinesiology tape. So there is not a case that I won't jump into and see what we can accomplish. So I have done a handful or multiple handfuls of neuro cases over the past, you know, six plus years. So if if I see something and um, and I get the opportunity to work on it, I do. And we have had some major results. So it's really exciting when you wanted to talk about this particular subject. I was like all on board. I guess we get some really awesome results. So that's a little bit about me and why I like to, I, you know, here's the one thing is I have yet to find something as effective as kinesiology taping with neuro issues, anywhere from paralysis, spinal traumas, getting over string holds, things, um, parasites and, and toxicities and, and a lot of stuff that affects the neurological system or central nervous system um, of the horse. And so uh, when you have something like that, it takes years to figure out why, what's the science behind it? How does it work? Can I repeat it? Can I reproduce it? You can't really give it to the world until you can reproduce it over and over, right? And mm -hmm. so we're definitely there um, and we've had enough cases under our belts now to start getting it out there. So that's why I was super excited that you want to talk about this today. That's really awesome. And this wasn't my topic. This comes from our members in our community, right? You guys showed a lot of interest in um, speaking about this. So here we are I'm here for you, listening to what you guys need and want. Um, so just to those that have joined now, quite a few people have come on live since you've introduced yourself. So welcome. It's great to have you. Please join the conversation, introduce yourselves, let us know who you are. Uh, so Rebecca, let's start with what are some of the neurological deficits that we're going to talk about today and that we might be, you know, that we might come across in practice um, and that you've seen and treated with Kinesio tape? Sure. Um, I will first pretty much any type of spinal trauma. Mm -hmm. um, and that can happen for a host of reasons. You know, we've all heard about the horses that trip and fall and go end over end and end up with spinal trauma. It can be something that you never really saw happen. Um, 
there's there's so many pieces to that puzzle. So it really does span a lot of the deficits that we end up seeing in horses, paralysis, weakness, um, especially in the extremities, tail function, um, they get really unbalanced, tripping, things like that. Uh, so that's <clears throat> probably the top one that I see consistently. Obviously, we have EPM or parasites, um, shivers. I've dealt with quite a few cases of shivers. And that's an unknown origin still to this day. Like, come on, let's figure out why this happens. Uh, string hole or, you know, and it, we have a little bit different toxic, right? So basically string holes comes from toxic plants, but um, it can change continent to continent, um, country to country. Um, you know, I've seen wobblers and sidewinders and all kinds of different things. So the way I like to class them is how is it affecting the body? And that is how I go about dealing with it, right? So it can be it can be five different things, five different horses all have five different neuro things going on, but it's affecting the body the same way. So I'm still going to treat it the same way, if that makes sense. Yes, for sure. Yeah, so you're treating essentially what you're seeing instead of necessarily um, like, I would say a, a protocol approach for this condition, you're gonna do X, Y, Z you're treating more, like you're taking more of a, a symptomatic approach and saying this is how the horse is presenting. So this is how we're going to approach it with kinesio tape. Is that right? Sort of. So let, let's just take the case of like APM, parasites. Mm -hmm. Well, they can go within the, the length of the spine. It, they can form, you know, more in the C spine and you're going to have certain issues that come about that so after the parasites are cleared especially if you catch it right away well you're still having the same neural functions that happen with c-spine injury it, mm -hmm. we're still we have to fix that part of the horse and mm -hmm. so what we see in them um, goes away as we start to deal with it so it depends on what happened where it happened within the body but still the idea of, of fixing it is the same. We have to create a, a space for healing. Um, we need to support the, whatever's gone wrong, we need to support that area. Um, we need to increase uh, circulation to bring oxygen rich blood to the area. And then we need to start rewriting neural pathways and healing the neural pathways. And so, the process is very similar no matter what's happened. The hard part is knowing what's happened and pinpointing where to start, right? And then after that, it's quite easy, you know, mm -hmm. and, and the rehab part is actually goes a lot easier than you would think. Once you have it isolated, supported the right healing environment, you can start to rewrite those neural pathways. You can start to get muscle function back. Um, and, you know, that I think is one of the most exciting things about using kinesiology tape. It's the one thing that will not affect the horse's electrical system. Um, you know, fascia, they talk about how the old Chinese medicine, the chi, if we all remember, you know, the chi, mm -hmm. the, 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 what I love about studying fascia is that we can see electricity running through the fascia. Mm -hmm. And so what they were feeling is real it's real. It happens in your body, right? We can scientifically show you how it happens. But the fascia is so um, full of these different sensors and receptors. And, and what we're doing is, in a sense, we know, and there's a study we can talk about, that um, you can create new neural pathways. So not only are we helping the body heal from the trauma, whether it was because of an accident or a parasite or a plant or degeneration or whatever, we're helping the, hot, the body heal in that specific spot and then creating neural pathways and using the fascia and the sensors in the body to do that. And we're doing it without affecting the horse's natural electrical system, without affecting their sensors by any waves, light, sound, from anything, you know, ceramics or 
or um, magnets or there's nothing going into that horse's body, nothing. Mm -hmm. And so we're not messing with any part of the system as it heals, which is intense Mm -hmm. and something that needs to be respected when you're dealing with sensors, receptors, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. No, that's and that's definitely an in, interesting thing for us to think about and consider because um with so many of our modalities that is our you know that is something that we're doing and um that forms part of like our goal but we don't understand it fully enough yet, right? So um so yeah, so so treating and affecting the the electrical currents within the body or the cellular, um, the cellular polarity. Um, you got me thinking of all the things, like all the words that I can't remember now. So that's fine. Right. Um, we all get <laughs> so, so the polarity of our cells. All of those things are something that we're affecting with um, PMF and with laser um, to a degree. Correct. And it has an effect, right? There's a reason we want to do that, but it's not. Correct we don't fully understand yet what the impact is throughout the body. So that's interesting. And it's, it's, it is like you say, we need to think about these things and is it something we want to do or do we not want to do it? And do we want to support the body in a different way? Um, And even saying that there is like, when we think about, about chi and how, how they affected that the flow of that energy or still do um, most of it is manual work, right? It's not something that you're, adding to the body you're yeah manually working with tissue or manipulating the body in some ways that um allow that movement of energy of current of electricity of stim, you know whatever we want to we want to call it and, and however we want to think about it it is indeed there um okay that's very right. interesting so let's let's have that thought in our minds um and now I'd love to, you touched on a few on a few different conditions um, and Sidewinder stands out for me. So I'd love to dive a little bit into that if you if that's okay with you, because that's just come up in our equine vet rehabbers group um, with someone okay. asking for advice on how they can manage that case. Um, and I'm going off of memory here, but I'm going to share the details of the case that I can remember. Um, It is an old horse. She has been managing the horse effectively for about two years now. um, And she just wanted to know what else she could do to support the horse. I think she was already using Cairo and some kinesio tape, but perhaps you could give her more, um, yeah, more of an idea from your perspective, how you would address Sidewinders with kinesio tape. Um, And what is Sidewinder? Because I know that I'm not the only person in the world that has never seen that or heard of that before, because I don't think we get it. <laughs> so, you know, there's a reason uh, I don't. I didn't actually put sidewinders on this uh, because it's not technically a neuro case. Mm. Right? So, yeah. So you know, a lot of people look at it as a neuro case, but it's really not. Um, okay. So, what you're looking to find in this area is where the damage happened. Something has damaged uh, the the reason that they track, and they call it sidewinders because they track differently. So the hind end is either floating to the left or floating to the right, which is what gives them that funky track. And mm-hmm. you know, some cases, if they if it's just a slight touch of it, they might just three track, you know, so their, their Mm -hmm. feet are moving in three separate tracks. It could be all the way completely out. You know, you can see, um, some cases they literally just walk in circles, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, it is technically not a neuro issue, um, which why I didn't put it in here, but I did bring it up because I think a lot of people put it in the same category and that's okay. Mm -hmm. You can still, do a lot of what I do for neuro cases with a sidewinders case. First thing that you want to do is just figure out where the trauma happened. And if you can't pinpoint that, then it makes it harder to address the body coming back into that alignment, um, depending on, and it usually happens in older horses. So that makes perfect sense. Um, But the faster you can address it, the better the prognosis. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so pinpointing the area that is has had an injury that has created this to happen. Um, and usually you can, I would say, depending on how severe it is, sometimes you can tell where within the spine something had happened. And more or less what I'm finding is decompression and support helps the best. Um, And so once you can decompress and support, and so uh, the best application I could send you to is on the website uh, modules, back module level three, and this is specifically for injuries in the back. Um, It's very supportive, decompressive, um, create a lot of structure. Once you can get that accomplished, then you want to see what effect that has on your horse. And then you can start to help the horse by supporting the other parts of the body. And usually it's the hind legs. You almost want to treat it like EPM at the beginning where we give the horse support so that they feel comfortable to move. And now we have to work on biomechanically getting them back into the position they should be in. So um, I could give you a little bit more information, but I would need to see the horse I would need specifics of the case and you're welcome to email those to me and then I can give you a little bit more specific direction. Um, Rebecca, are you in our Equine Vetri Habers Facebook group? I believe I've liked it. (laughs) That's not good enough. Oh, I don't know. Send me, yeah, send me an invite. (laughs) So we'll get you in that group and then I'll tag you in the in the case discussion and you can share yeah, some more there um, sure. and the the specific vetriaba can share a little bit more information on the case with us as well i think that'd be a very interesting learning opportunity and i i actually love that this has come up now about you know is it neurological or isn't it neurological because right. um we've recently had a phenomenal webinar series with amy hesbach and jillian tabor on neuroplasticity Um, and one of the things that they really focused on is that you know in every case is a neuro case really every case the in every case the neurological system is affected and needs to be addressed and needs to be um supported in healing and coming back to normal because whatever it is whether it's arthritis or an orthopedic injury or an injury to a nerve um, or to the central nervous system, there will be changes within the peripheral nerves and the central nervous system and the brain um, to accommodate for that injury and for that dysfunction. So we need to be aware of all those changes. And I love that. So I can really um, recommend that series to you guys. It's like one of my all-time favorites. I love listening to Amy Hesbach speaking about neuroplasticity absolute favorites um okay so how important you you've you've really highlighted now with the sidewinders that localizing where the lesion occurred and what actually is causing the sidewinders is so important so it but in horses often getting a diagnosis is like nearly impossible so how how important in your experience with your cases has having a correct and accurate diagnosis been because most of the time we're working without that right yeah yeah Yeah. you know i'm like one of those people where i'm like i want i want the best possible diagnosis i can get okay so um let me put it this way without the correct diagnosis, we're at best guessing. Mm. Okay, so that's not a great place to start. If you think about it, you know, um, yes, you can put a dart board up on the wall and you can blindfold yourself and throw a hundred darts, or you can take the blindfold off and throw one, right? That's what a correct diagnosis gives you, right? It's gonna save you time, money, energy, and headache, right? So that is important. Um, Let's say that you are maybe unable to get the diagnosis due to the vet in your area shows up and says, mm, I have no idea. Okay, as, mm-hmm. as a, a rehabber, as um, a practitioner of any kind in the healthcare field, um, 
So let me talk to that group first and then we'll talk to like the owners <laughs> and, and grooms, managers, writers, things like that. So understanding how to look at the symptom and be able to track it back is probably mm -hmm. one of the best things you can do. I think I see neuro issues in almost every horse I work with, okay? So, you know, I can see a lot of structural things or biomechanics or maybe belly issues or whatever, 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 but I almost always see something neurological as well. All right, so, um, and that goes to the fact that yes, the body is connected. So whether or not we want to admit it, Mm, nerves are going to be involved. We can do something to help. So understanding what it looks like. What does it look like when you have an injury in the pole or between the head and the atlas? What does it look like when you have something through the C-spine? What does the horse present with? How do they look? Being able to see that and understand that tells you about where the injury took place. Mm or what's going on. So that will help the practitioner narrow down where something needs to be treated. Where do we want to focus the treatment on in the beginning, right? So the first thing that I do is decompress and support, decompress and support, you know, every time. It's always gonna start that way, so you'd never have to guess. Um, and so I need to know where to decompress and support, right? So that's if you don't have a vet that's giving you a diagnosis, but you're a practitioner healthcare provider. If you are an owner, a rider, a groom, something like that, articulating what you see in your horse will help you get a better diagnosis than anything you can do. So watch your mm -hmm. horse, study your horse. What are they doing? Are we having like a, a sideways head kind of twitch thing going on? Articulate that. Is the mouth droopy? Is one ear floppy? you need to take really good notes about your horse horse under your care because when you can articulate it to your vet they're going to trigger and go oh we have we have something neurological going oh let me test for epm let me test for string holes let me test for this mm -hmm. right get the battery of test it's worth it do the blood work <laughs> do the fecals it's worth it right so they're not expensive they're really not um that narrows it down and um they're like treating your horse for parasites isn't really going to hurt your horse. You know what I'm saying? So if you're in doubt, do it. Uh, detoxing your horse because of a toxic plant isn't going to hurt your horse if they didn't have a toxic plant mm -hmm. ingestion. If they haven't done, it's just going to help their body detox anyways. So, you know, in certain areas, treating before diagnosis can be harmful. In these, not really. You know what I mean? It may... Are there things that you might want to do after treatment to help your horse? Sure. But so those are the some of the areas I want to focus on because we are split in two groups. We have the professional practitioners and we have the horse owners. And and my guess is you draw a group of both. And so we we can't give them the same information or suggestions. Um, so that's what I would do. And believe it or not, um, while there are great vets when it comes to neurological issues, in my world, I have found the practitioners to be better in this area because they're the ones doing the rehabilitation part of it. So they okay. just seem to have a better grasp on how to help the horse all the way through, right? Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, most of our vets don't have the time to do more than the ambulatory work that they have to do and um the you know they're they go in evaluate the horse run the test whatever and so mm -hmm. they're not really standing with these horses all the way through um it's your it's your other therapists it's your physios that do so mm -hmm. they tend to have a better grasp of what it takes to get the horse through and to rehab them understanding mm -hmm. prognosis and that's a big deal. But I have also gone to the point where I've yet to have one come all the way through. You know, it's, once we start, we get them fully rehabbed. If we get them in the right area, there, there are cases I never see, obviously. So there's nothing I can do. But to this date, I've yet to see one not fully recover. I've had full face paralysis fully recover. I mean, we've done a lot. Um, so... I would say when you look at the prognosis, 
of it, if the vet tells you, okay, you do have sidewinder, de definitely sidewinders. Well, if you look at prognosis on Google, sorry guys, it's gonna freak you out. <laughs> like, don't get freaked out yet. You know what I mean? Like, let's start treating yeah. it. Let's see how they respond to treatment. Yeah. Okay, great. So I just want to welcome everyone who's come on live in the last few minutes. It's great to have you guys join us. We are chatting about neurological conditions. Um, and from here, I think that we are going to jump into some case discussions and um, how they're presenting and how Rebecca's treated them. But I just want to invite you guys to join the conversation. If you have any questions, if you have any um, thoughts or concerns or um, ideas, cases please share them with us let's have a conversation and let's discuss these things um so rebecca let's talk about some of your cases that you've seen how they've presented how you've kind of how you have treated them how you've gone about treating them and what your reasoning has been with those cases sure um well just before i jump into specifically talking about a case let let me just give you a a list of things that you can look out for um, to try and figure out are you truly dealing with a neuro case um okay. so and and here's my definition of it by the way you know everybody has their own definition but for me it has to do with the central nervous system and its ability to communicate the body to communicate with the central nervous system and the central nervous system to be able to communicate with the body so this is when I class neuro. Past that, it's something else, but there's always going to be something neurological that comes with it, like you guys brought up. So, um, but really quickly, so we're talking about odd ear placement, weakness, twitching, spooking. Believe it or not, this is one of your best indicators. Um, the horse being unbalanced, high stepping, not sleeping. Um, these are big ones, and most people don't realize it's happening. Inability to back, aggressive. This goes along with spooking. When your horse doesn't feel confident and safe and something is going wrong inside, they tend to be spooking and aggressive. Tripping, falling, odd head placement. This is really a big one too. Can't swish their tail if you see something like that. Um, then slow to respond, retracting the hind legs, abnormal gait. These are your signs as a practitioner and an owner that something neurological is going on and it's time to look deeper. Um, one of the well, I want to start with paralysis. I had a um, case years back where the horse had. Um, <clears throat> so, if you want me to share the screen, surgery. Just let me know. Um, yeah, so this screen. is on. Yeah, if you want to give me the slides, I'll pop the picture of this case on. And this is on nine. Okay. So, yeah, it's so cute. Mama loves him. Um, this horse had colic surgery and coming off of the table, the way they pulled him off the table, he had full paralysis um, on the left side of his face where you see those little tentacles moving around. Um, and his lip was all drooping and he could barely eat and couldn't open and close his eye. Um, and so what you're seeing here is decompression behind the ear and then those little tentacles that is me helping him rewrite neural pathways and he mm -hmm. I'm, he recovered 100 percent. they gave him uh, something like 45 percent is what they thought when he left the hospital so he recovered 100 oh, percent wow. um the other what you're looking at in the neck is um i took this picture before i did the c-spine support but i always do c-spine support when we have an injury in that atlas junction area um but what i do like i said it's always going to be decompression first and support so decompress the area of trauma create space you know if you don't understand how kinesiology tape works this is going to be hard to put together but by creating space we're allowing that natural healing um environment to increase that's what we want to do first and foremost is heal the area so we're going to decompress it and support it so decompress support for biomechanics so things are operating functionally better okay um and so that's huge in in neuro cases but understanding that equine elastic kinesiology tape 
really works within the skin and the fascia to communicate with everything else, right? So it's working through sensors and receptors. The sensors and receptors live in the hair root plexus and in the fascia itself. And so we use those sensors to communicate with the body. So I'm using the sensors in his hair root plexus that haven't been damaged to create neural pathways through the fascia to give him back sensation and to rewrite and to help heal the nerves. And so that's how I treat neuro cases, especially something like this paralysis. And, and this is just one of them. We've had so many, I, there's just no way. I just had to pick one to put in this presentation or you guys would have been looking at pictures forever. So um, yeah, so this is how I've dealt with paralysis. So I mean, if you have questions on that, go ahead and ask, um, mm. but Oh yeah, great. So, so I mean, like, um, let me gather my thoughts. Sorry. Um, so compression of of those facial nerves during surgery is not an uncommon complication. So it is something that we might come across in practice. If you guys have, let us know, um, because that's that's yeah, it, it does happen. So, um, I know that we're talking about kinesio tape. I know that, but would you? <laughs> would you work with other modalities as well? Um, like I would be using, um, or I would try and use tense on this guy, depending on, on how he takes to that, um, to, to prevent atrophy and to just help wake up those nerves as well. Would you do any of that? Um, or some active uh, yeah, so I, try and you know, activate those muscles? Right, uh, you know, activation comes later. The first thing we wanna do is, okay. is deal with the nerves, right? Um, and so, mm -hmm. yes, but not till, not till I get those neural right. pathways rewritten. Um, okay. You know, especially with this particular horse, um, we went through and did a whole round of work through his neck muscles after all of this and mm -hmm. activating the muscles, relaxing the muscle, activating, relaxing, really just going back and forth and, and getting those muscles to fire better and stronger and, and and a hundred percent rehab, you know, at Equitape, I say it all the time. I want to get you all the way through your training or re rehabilitation protocol, but only get you halfway and stop, right? We, we want to achieve the goal. So for sure, uh, but not in the first part. Again, I have found horses to do much better when we leave their systems alone, when we are as least invasive as possible in the forefront. Now, after, yes, when he started blinking, well, his lip had full, and you can see at this point in time, this is probably, I don't know, uh, four weeks into treatment with me. Um, you can't see any paralysis left in that horse in that mm -hmm. picture. But I was still treating the nerves. When I go mm -hmm. and I see his response, and if, even if I see just a, a twitch slower, um, I'm still going to treat it. So after all that was done, yeah, he went through a whole round of therapy to really get the body back to where it should be. But I leave it alone in the beginning. Mm -hmm. I've just found it to work faster and better if you leave it alone. Mm -hmm. If I don't introduce anything, like nothing to the horse, but kinesiology tape. And I won't even okay. do Cairo until um, we're stabilized, right? So maybe four weeks of stabilization and support. And then we start to introduce chiropractic um, and gentle, easy manipulations. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we want, we want to create stability again. When you have an injury, think about it as a human, you have an injury anywhere in your spine. Um, no chiropractor is going to touch you, right? <laughs> there, there is no way, right? They want to, you need to be stabilized. They need to know you're stabilized, that the injury is, you know, before they start to manipulate and then they will, and they do it in slow pieces and little bits and slowly work you mm -hmm. into where you can handle those type of adjustments. So I think sometimes we just have to um, re address our own mental state of how do we treat these horses? How fast do we do it? How slow do we do it? I think a lot of us want to push really fast in these cases. Yeah. I like to take a step back and mm -hmm. and give them time and and allow them to to rewrite those pathways it takes 66 days to rewrite a neural pathway so give mm -hmm. them a little time 
So that's that's great. Great. So cases. guys, any questions or comments, share them. Um, I, w I was going to ask you about the timeline, but you, you answered that already. So that's great. Yeah. What's I'm going to show you this case. Um, so this was, she had so many injuries, um, a beautiful mare. And I met her through a practitioner um, and she had so many injuries and this particular practitioner had been working on her for years before I ever saw her. And as soon as I saw her, I could just tell she had, she didn't have the use of her tail. It just mm -hmm. hung there. Um, you could see in her hind gait, a little bit trippy, slow moving on one side and then slow moving on the other side, kind of go back and forth. She had a droopy ear. Yeah just all kinds of stuff. And she had done a battery of things for this horse and really just tried to give her the best care possible. When I saw her, I did a just a neuro check where I'm manipulating the nerves and I'm testing to see if they're actually firing through the body. And so I found very little. Uh, so mm -hmm. what you're seeing here is a protocol that she did. Um, she did this and then the neck and we addressed basically the whole body of the horse without the neck uh, for six weeks and then the neck alone for six weeks. And we went back to the body and then back to the neck. Um, and this was, I want to say about a six month or so protocol. Um, mm -hmm. And she is now in upper level dressage and competing and winning. So um, it can, it can happen. Yes. Can happen. So, <laughs> and what you're seeing on top again is, decompression all of that is decompression throughout where i could tell that the nerve was not communicating either either the body couldn't get the neurosensors to go into the central nervous system or the central nervous mm -hmm. system couldn't get it out to the body whatever was mm -hmm. either one could have been wrong you understand it could have happened anywhere within that chain but i decompress and support so there's a ton of support through that spine and decompression and those waves are my neural pathways right let's mm -hmm. let's talk body get back into life right so again okay. 66 days to rewrite neural pathways you need time and that's why i broke this down six weeks on one part six weeks on the other six weeks on one part six weeks on the other, and we went back and forth until she had full function of the tail the ears were all happy the head was happy the body was happy you could feel the nerves firing all over. She had a great gait and, um, and yeah, so there's that one. That's a fun one. Okay, right? so and this is um, unknown trauma, but. Yeah. Okay, very interesting. Um, so you've already spoken a bit about this, but give us a little bit more detail on um, why you chose this specific application and, and, and what your, hoping that it's going to achieve. I know you've already said quite a bit, but maybe there's some more expansion that you can put there. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, first I get that as a normal people in the world, especially practitioners and even practitioners in kinesiology taping. And I know, Anne, you are one yourself. Um, looking at this, the first thing you're going to say is, wow, that's a lot of tape. And you would be right. It is a lot of tape. <laughs> um, one, what I tell people in doing this, and one thing that I would suggest is uh, try to avoid the lymph basins. Uh, mm -hmm. You can see in here, we've avoided the shoulder lymph basin and the hip lymph basin um, because we want to work on nerves and fascia. Mm -hmm. um, we don't want to recruit the lymphatic system into it. The lymphatic system is going to respond to an application like that even if you stay away from the basins, um, but that's okay. Responding is one thing, activating it is different. Um, your decompression is gonna be the most important thing. So all of these applications, all of these pieces that you're seeing over the back are what I consider spider cuts, that's what we call them. The middle of the tape is left solid and the tentacles are on the ends going out. So it kind of looks like a, a body with tentacles coming out. Um, so is it and going that across body, the back to the other side? One piece of tape is crossing the back to the other side. Correct. Correct. Okay. So each area where it's solid has been stretched, set down, pushed back together to create decompression. 
and I'm doing mm -hmm. it over the part that I felt was the injured area from years and years ago. And so I'm giving it support and then one long piece of support to help the whole, uh, well, lumbar area. Um, so that's what you're seeing. The tentacles don't have stretch on them at all. Um, they're laid on the horse. Again, I wanna talk to the hair root plexus and I wanna talk to the sensors that live within the fascia. And so by uh, putting it on no stretch, and I know a lot of people think, well, what's the point if you're putting it on with no stretch? Well, every time that horse moves, it will stretch and recoil because the skin will stretch. And so I want very little stretch because I, I want to communicate with the body in a very different way. So this isn't about um, supporting or, do, you know, at this point in the tentacles, it's not support, it's not decompression, it's not, it's so far off that it's not even circulation. Circulation mm -hmm. is applied differently. I'm not trying to increase circulation to that area. I'm trying to just talk to the nerves. So no stretch waves. The reason for the waves is fascia. Um, I'm trying to interrupt the fascia, right? So as fascia gets injured, it tries to ball. It gets dehydrated. Mm -hmm. um, it needs to be smooth and glidey. So uh, the waves interrupt it. It's like gently pulling a necklace apart when it gets a, a knot in it. If you just pull, you're going to make mm -hmm. the knot work. But if you slightly pull a little bit apart like this, so that's mm -hmm. what those waves are doing as that horse moves and the skin expands and contracts and the muscles underneath expand and contract and the fascia move, that tape is moving and it's gently releasing the fascia. And so now we're getting more neurological communication mm -hmm. and our neural sensors are able to communicate. You have to remember inflammation anywhere within the system will stop the nerve from being able to function as well as it can. So decompression relieves inflammation. It reduces the inflammation. We want to reduce as much inflammation as possible. Fascia, trauma in fascia will also stop nerves from being able to communicate properly. So you have to deal with inflammation. You have to deal with fascia or you're never going to get a neuro case all the way to the end. So that is the whole premises behind it. Mm-hmm. I love that you've said Exciting. no stretch in those areas because um, there's definitely a component of less is more when you're talking to the nervous system. Um, and and uh, we've we've had some lecturers also speak about this and address that as well because we like we love to put stretch in it, um, especially when we're putting, you know, we're dividing the tape and we're creating tentacles or whatever. Uh, our tendency, because it's so small, is to put stretch in without realizing, and then that has less of an effect um, when we're trying to talk to that nervous system. Um, so, so this strip on the back is it going mm -hmm. along the um, longissimus dorsi, or is it on the spine of the horse? I just ask you. It's on I the can't spine. Really see that on the spine. Yep, Great. it's on the spine. Um, That's a, a thicker piece of tape. So you have quite a, okay. you know, it's a three inch piece of tape. So you have a little bit more room to go around the spine, mm -hmm. but it's decompressing through that thoracic lumbar junction. Okay, perfect. And the other thing I wanted to say when you're, you know, creating that wave is that you'll have, um, you'll have an area of like your, your tape will stretch the side and then compress the side and stretch the side and compress the side and keep changing even with zero stretch because you're creating that that zigzag Correct. so um and that's another way that you're like interrupting that that um yeah the fascia any restrictions that might be there so i really like that exactly um it's a super gentle way of you know, just like taking your skin and trying to roll it off of your muscle. Mm. It's, it's a very gentle way of doing that. And by doing that, all you are doing is increasing mobility in the fascia. You are slowly breaking apart adhesions. You're increasing hydration into the fascia. So mm. by doing that, we are healing the nervous system. More mm. nerves run in through our skin and fascia than we than we like to give credit to at all 
everybody's like go straight we're going to go right to that nerve uh okay let let's let's start here and work down um and so it it something like this can be left on a horse and not worried about if you go yeah. and you do a fascia application and you're moving in between, and I teach a lot of different techniques for fascia, but if you're moving in between 50% stretch and 0%, 50 and zero, I wouldn't leave it on the horse for a long period of time. When you are doing zero stretch, none, you're allowing the horse to manage their own therapy. Okay. If the horse is I like, like hey, just... I'm a little tired today maybe yeah. i don't feel as great i'm gonna stand here i'm not getting any therapy hey i feel mm -hmm. great i want to move around oh look at all the therapy i'm getting okay that's too mm -hmm. much i'm gonna stand here they are now allowed to manage their own therapy I like that so i like that you've mentioned that you're um you know the, we're, we're addressing the nervous system on different levels so we're not just looking at the pathway of a peripheral nerve for example we're looking at there are there are mechanoreceptors and, and sensory nerves throughout the skin and the fascia. Correct. Wherever you stick tape, you're gonna you're gonna be affecting a nerve. Um, but when you're doing something like this, are you thinking about the, those pathways that the peripheral nerves are running? And are Absolutely. you thinking about putting your your tape along those pathways and helping to decompress those pathways? Absolutely. There are definitely applications where I focus just on the nerve itself. And, um, you know, I'll, I have a couple other ones I can show you, but absolutely. But I, <clears throat> if you can get past, so this is step one of recovery and step one of recovery can take months, right? So step two is we get into the specific nerves and now we can really use stretch We've broken up the fascial adhesions. We've got nice ooey gooey fascia. The horse is already rewriting neural pathways. They're doing better. Now we get in and we start working on the particular nerve, right? We Now we're more specific. And so understanding the anatomy is crucial. If you're going to be a practitioner and be successful with equine elastic kinesiology tape, and this is why Equitape stands out so much, is because everything we do is about science. If it's not science-backed, we're not going to do it. We're not going to teach it. And I tell every one of my students who wants to become certified, if you do not understand anatomy, you will not be successful with equine elastic kinesiology tape. You must know your anatomy because pinpointing the exact right place is huge. Having the right technique is huge. And then you can have the kind of cases that I've got and that some of my practitioners around the world have got. But it is understanding the anatomy. There is nothing wrong with researching that case, that particular horse you're going to go see, and researching every part of the anatomy you're going to deal with before you show up so you nail it. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I research for every paper I write. I research for every lecture I do. I don't care. I sat and researched just to talk to you today. And I know this stuff like the back of my hand. This is what makes excellent practitioners. And this is what get you guys all the way through the goal. So I cannot stress that enough. Never stop learning, guys. So don't Never. let me ask all the questions to all of our listeners. Please jump in the conversation and join. Um, I'm going to ask one more on this case and then we can move on. So um, you've said that you're you're focusing on decompressing and supporting the area where you think most likely the trauma happened or the, the issue lies. So am I right then in saying that there where our red and yellow and blue cross on the spine that's where you're assuming the, the main problem to be and Correct. if it was a little bit more forward or backwards or wherever on the body that or along the spine you would move that cross to that region correct yeah correct it's exactly okay. right yeah okay let's move on to the next case and i think we'll do one more and then wrap it up for today Great. So I want to show you a string halt, and this is the one that's on my my desktop. And all right, uh, you tell me when you want me to play it. I can see it. I think we can all see it. So you can go ahead. Okay. So this is done. Um, the actual work was done by Kylie Abel in Australia, um, and. She is one of the best practitioners in the world in equine elastic kinesiology taping. I had the lovely 
um, opportunity to train her and mentor her for years. Um, so she was kind enough to send me in some of this. We actually do quite a bit of neural work together. So this is before and after. Now, the same thing. All right, so we're good. We can go back to the other screen now. Um, it's the same principle. We start with decompression and support. Um, a lot of support goes into these type of cases because, and I've got a, a picture I can throw up here. I just have to know what slide it is. Six. Oh, okay. yeah. I'd, I was going to um, say I'd love to look at that application and let's talk about that, yeah, that application. So this is supporting um, between your thoracic, lumbar, sacroiliac going down. And we also, especially these type of cases, string holds and EPM, we like to support the legs. They feel uncomfortable. Um, and so we, we want to give them almost like a support system below that gives them a more comforting feeling. Um, we do a lot of, again, rewriting neural pathways in this. So support, decompress. Obviously, you know, with string holds, we need the toxin cleared. So you can follow veterinarian advice, detox your horse. <laughs> you know, EPM, follow veterinarian advice, get the parasites gone. And then we do this, right? So, um, so the same process, you're going to decompress, you're going to support, and then you're going to start communicating with the muscle. So the application that you're seeing at this point, we do still have support in there. Not a lot of decompression left, but there is a lot of support left. And what we're doing is specifically rewriting neural pathways and communicating with that and talking to muscle. So this has a lot more mechanoreceptor involved and proprioception involved. Now, this is generally what you do towards the, when you're rehabbing, right? So a case like this, and you saw the difference in 11 days, it doesn't mean that we stop there. We will still work on proprioception. We will still work on mechanoreceptors. Um, but in these type of cases, we're talking about toxicity that affected the central nervous system. It's not where parasites can damage the nervous system really bad and so can toxicity, but if you clear it quick enough, you're in a, a different world. So understanding where it's at and, and how to help it. Um, we want to communicate with the muscle again, get through the fascia, that's important, detox or um, decompress support, work through your fascia and then here, your red pieces coming around looks like it's hitting into your biceps femoris. You see how it goes down into that Y? I'm like pointing at my screen mm -hmm. and you guys can't see that. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> see right there. <laughs> so this is activation of the muscles, but it's also proprioception. Um, we, we want the horse to think about the leg. And when we're you know, mm -hmm. that hind leg is like sucking way up um, and and slamming hard down. Think about it like this. Uh, you're in the gym, your physio is trying to help you rehab and you've got one of those pulley things attached to a machine. And he says, okay, you're, I've got five pounds on the pulley and you start pulling it. And then he says, okay, I'm going to change the weight to 10 pounds. That next pull, but he doesn't change the weight. He leaves it at five. What's going to happen? You're going to whack yourself in the chest, right? <laughs> it's a neural pathway. Your brain is telling your body to do something in anticipation, okay? This is a lot of what happens in neuro cases where we see these weird things happen. The, the legs do weird stuff. The head and neck do weird stuff. The twitches, the insomnia, um, things like that is we want to rewrite those pathways, but we need proprioception and we need to, to remind the body, no, you don't have to do that. You don't have to fire that leg so hard. And so that's what you're seeing in this is it has a lot more to do with the mechanoreceptors and uh, proprioception. 
Okay, I love it. Guys, any questions? Now is the time to share them. We are hitting an hour in a few minutes, so we're going to wrap up now. Um, I want to mention a few resources that uh, you can find in the online pet health membership just as we're closing off. If you want to know more about you know, rehabilitation for the neurological horse, that's including more of what we do or all of what we do. Uh, Tina Ossini did a fantastic webinar, which is in the equine members portal on that subject, rehabilitation for neurological horses. And Leslie Goff has also done a lecture for us, physiotherapy for neural tissue in the horse, where she's looking very much at how we can um, yeah, affect, stretch, manipulate, work with our nerves through the body. And that's by far one of my favorites. Um, and then I've already mentioned Amy Hesbach and Julian Tabor presented a four-part series on neuroplasticity. And that's really going to give you the understanding of how the neurological system is integrating into um, every every single case that you see um, and how some novel ways that we can address that and work with that. Um, this is Amy's area of speciality, although she's a small animal practitioner. That's why we brought Jillian Tabor in to kind of bring that equine perspective and mesh those perspectives together to see what are we missing in our equine patients that is happening in small animals and humans um, because often we just don't have that um, have that perspective, right? We're, we're working in one area and in one place. So I love, love, love bringing different perspectives together and seeing where that takes us. Um, and then, Rebecca, you guys have a lot of resources as well. So if people want to learn more about using Equitape and your applications, where do they go? What do they do? Yeah, um, so definitely everybody's welcome to come to the website www.equitape.com um understanding the basics is going to be the biggest step first in just getting your feet under you and in the possibilities of what kinesiology tape can do uh, and so that's the fundamentals of equitape of course um having said that case specific i do have a form you can fill out on the website where you can ask a case specific question. That question goes to the education department. And if they don't know how to answer it, I will answer it myself. Um, every single person who asks a question gets answered at Equitape. I don't care what the case is, how hard or easy it is, uh, everybody gets answered. So if you have a specific horse that you were working with and you didn't wanna jump in here, or maybe you're seeing this later, um, definitely go there, fill out the form again, that's www.equitape.com. And I help with every case that comes across my board. So best and easiest way to do it. I don't produce education on neurological issues currently. I will be um, later. Uh, but it, I was telling Anne before we went live that you have to have years of the same result over and over before you can bring it to the public and teach it. So I have years of the same result over and over and over. It's just going to take me time to build the education and get it out there. Um, but it is time finally to do that. So I know my practitioners are probably jumping up and down hearing that come out of my mouth because they've been asking for this for a while. <laughs> <laughs> That's very exciting. Thank you. Um, thank you, Rebecca. And then um, my last challenge for you guys is... Um, the Vet Rehab Summit. We are almost launching the website, almost opening the tickets. We are so close. I cannot tell you. I'll tweak the website and then it's up and out and ready for you guys to have a look at. So get ready. Time to level up. Seek excellence in everything that you do. That's our theme this year. Um, so keep your eyes open for when that launches. I'm very excited. Rebecca, thank you for your time today. And to all those that have joined us live, thank you so much. You're welcome. It was great talking with you again. Awesome. Bye, guys.